Welcome to the third devlog about making a Game Boy style game in Game Maker Studio 2. In the last two devlogs, I planned out the project, defining the scope, etc., drew up the player character, coded some of the basic movements, and started implementing UI elements. Today, we're going to look at two things. First, coding some logic for the player to get hurt and displaying it correctly in the UI and second, creating a safe system so the game remembers which collectibles you have already collected and which levels you have completed. Since I already have the graphics for the UI part of the health system, the first thing I have to worry about is giving the player the functionality of getting hurt by whatever. So we first need to create a sprite that reflects the hurt state. For this, I hopped back into Photoshop and edited the idle sprite of the player a bit until he looked hurt enough. I added a sprite to GameMaker and added another state to my state machine. I drew up this little dummy spike that looks like crap, but it gets the job done. I made it so that when the player gets in contact with the spike, he gets knocked back in the opposite direction he's facing and get some sweet iframes, so he doesn't instantly lose like 3 billion health when in contact with the spike for just a few game steps. To communicate these iframes to the player, I just made the pig sprite a bit transparent for the duration of the iframes. After that, I made it so that the health in the UI reflects the actual hit points of the player and wait, that's like backwards. <laughs> I added the code and now it looked pretty solid. But just a second, remember when I said that I would just add some transparency to the sprite to communicate the iframes to the player 5 seconds ago? Well, <laughs> I only realized after a bit of goofing around in the test room that that's in no way how Game Boy displays work. When displaying the see-through sprite on top of other sprites, we get all sorts of mixed additional colors but the Game Boy can only display the four defined shades we talked about. So I remade the effect and switched from transparency to a flashing pig sprite. I'm still trying to figure out if this is too difficult on the eye, but we'll keep it for now. This dummy hazard object can now be defined as a parent object for all spikes, enemies, projectiles and so on, so the logic for hurting the player is always in place from the get-go. Saving your game is a topic that was always heavily discussed in the GameMaker forums, because it is such an integral part of pretty much every single modern game, but especially for newcomers to programming, it can seem a bit overwhelming if you don't know where to start. But the saving itself is quite straightforward if you first figure out what you want to be saved exactly. Because saving is not this magical process of freezing your game in time, it's pretty much just taking some values and putting them into a file to read back into the game later. An eager shooter might save the position, the ammo and health of the player. A survival horror game saves the state of the puzzles and your inventory. You get the idea. These values get put into a file and when loading the game it reads these values from the file and adjusts the game according to the new parameters. So, in the save file, for a relatively simple game like this project, we pretty much need to keep track of only two things. First, what levels have been completed already, and second, what collectibles have been collected in these levels so far. So, we need one variable for every level completed and one for every collectible picked up. In total, that's five variables for each level. We start out by creating a data map, which is just a list of key and value pairs and fill it up with values for each collectible. I gave it a syntax, which is comprised of the world and level number, so for example LVL, then 1-1 for world 1, level 1 and the collectible number, so 1, 2, 3 and S for special which will be used for the fourth collectible you get when collecting 100 smaller ones in the level. For now, we set them all to false because we have not collected anything yet. We then save this data structure into a global variable. 
After that, I create an object that displays the value on screen for me to check if everything works as intended. Works fine. So now I need to add the other three lines for the other key value pairs. And of course it works as well. Although the spacing is a bit too small, so I adjusted it all using the power of math, because I'm too damn lazy. And now the spacing looks just right. But it was then I noticed something, some of you might have noticed this well by now. A spelling mistake. But fear not, citizen! With GameMaker's Find and Replace tool, you can easily replace one thing with another in the whole project, with one click, not just in one object or script. Just glorious. Moving on, I needed an actual collectible to collect, which changes the value in the data map. So I coded this general object and gave it a simple variable with a collectible code following the same syntax, which can be later easily altered in the room editor. If it detects the player touching it, it changes the value in the data map, following the variable. And as you can see, the number in the top left corner changes to a1, meaning true. After this success, I added a bunch more collectibles in the room and changed their variables accordingly. And with all three collectibles in place, the system seems to work just fine. All values get changed correctly when collecting them. To reflect this in the UI, I had to change the placeholder UI element, gave it some code and replaced it in the room editor as well. And testing it now, you can see how the UI element changes with the collection of the thingies so you know which collectibles you are missing in the level. For the special fourth collectible, I added a new global variable called barCollected100 to keep track on how many smaller collectibles have been collected in this run of the level. I made another UI element for this, which changes its graphic once all 100 drops have been collected. And once this is the case, the variable in the data map is changed to true as well. I replaced this UI element in the room editor as well, and now by artificially increasing the number of drops collected, we are finally able to quote unquote collect all four collectibles present in the level. Now that everything is working fine for the moment, I increase the size of the data map to span all four levels of the first world for now. Lore wise, since the pig gets mutated by some strange chemical X, I wanted the big collectibles to be containers of said chemical. So I made a sprite for it in Photoshop and quickly put it in and I think it looks pretty dope. But the collecting didn't feel satisfying with the container just disappearing. So I altered the sprite to make it appear broken once you've collected it. Not only does it look better, it's a lot cooler to revisit levels and have a reminder where you have already found collectibles. Having all of this in place, it was finally time to actually write the save file. This is quite simple in GameMaker. You only have to open a ini file, which will be created when it's not found, write the variables from the data map into a section of the ini and close it again. I chose to call this code every time I press backspace for now. Later, this will be automated at certain moments in the game like right when collecting something or when you finish a level. The ini file looks like this. If players would find this file, they could technically change the values, but they would cheat themselves more than anything else. But to prevent this, we later can think about means of encrypting these values, but for now we'll just leave it like that. Getting these values back into the data structure when booting up the game looks pretty similar, but instead of any write, we'll now just use any read. So if we now collect something and restart the game, everything is as before, 
but once we collect something and press backspace for saving, restarting the game, we'll see that the level now remembers that these collectibles have already been picked up. Testing the same thing with all three containers and it works like a charm. The last thing we need now are the sprites for the little chemical X drops that will contribute to the special collectible, which I again drew up in Photoshop, created an object for which increases the global variable by one when picked up, and with that the collectible and save system was complete. There is still some juice missing like particle effects and animations, but that's something for the next devlog. In just the last month, I've seen incredible numbers for my channel. For some, a few hundred views per video doesn't mean much, but for me it's just mind-blowing and I'm so happy and glad I decided to start this journey. So a big thank you to everyone who subscribed or simply watched my videos. I hope I can continue to give you all some entertainment and insights into the world of indie game development. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!